Imagine capturing leads while you sleep. Zapier automation for lead generation turns that dream into reality. By connecting your favorite tools, Zapier lets you automate repetitive tasks, like adding new website form submissions to your CRM, sending personalized welcome emails to new leads, triggering follow-up messages based on user interactions. This frees up your time to focus on nurturing leads and closing deals. Zapier integrates with thousands of apps, making it a powerful tool for any business looking to streamline their lead gen process. On their website, there are multiple plans for different usages. You may select the one which fits your business best. For the beginners, there is also a free plan. After you log on your account, click the plus button to create a new table. There are many templates for you to choose. Here we will click the tab to create a blank table. Let us enter the name, VF to Zapier Demo. On this new table, we click to edit field 1. We are going to save the username in this field, so we enter, name. Click the save button. For field 2, we enter email, and we will save the user's email address. For field 3, we enter phone to save the user's phone number. After the table settings are done, we click the create button to add automation and click the start from scratch button to build a new automation. Click the trigger and then the web hook. We are going to add an event for this trigger. We select the catch hook to receive data from outside. Click continue button to go to the next step. We do not need a child key and click continue. We see the web hook URL, which we will use to pass the lead data. Click to make a copy for later use. Next, let us go to voice flow canvas. Here shows a simple lead generation chat bot. In the first text block, we ask the user, would you like to leave contact information so we will get back to you soon? We have two buttons for the user to click, yes and no. If yes, we ask the user's name and use a capture block to save the user's reply to the variable name. Next, we ask the user's email address and save it to the variable email. We then ask the user's phone number and save it in the variable. We use an API block to send the data to Zapier. The API status is post, and we input the webhook URL. In the body section, we select from data. We enter the key value pairs of name, email, and phone number. Let us test the API by clicking the send request button. We populate the parameters and click the generate button. We see the 200 OK status, which means the API call has succeeded. Let us go to Zapier. We see the data have been passed to Zapier with the name, email, and phone number. We click the Continue button and select the tables to save the data to our table. Let us choose an event to update record. For table ID, we select our table and we select the record ID to be updated with the data. We insert the data name with corresponding variable and same for email and phone number. Now we click the Test Step button and we can see the new data have been added. If we go to our table, we see the data in the record. On the voice flow canvas, we add a text block and enter, thank you with a variable name, which saves the user's name, and we will contact you soon. Have a good day. Let us run a test. Click the yes button. And enter the name, email address, and phone number. Finally, the bot says, thank you, Mike. Let us check our table. But the record has not been updated. It seems like I have forgotten to publish the zap. Let us do it now. Let us go back to the chatbot and run the test again. Let us check the table and we can see the record has been updated with the new data. This is perfect when a user updates his email address or phone number and we can update this specific record to save the user's new email address or phone number. When we want to collect the information of different users, we can use another event of the trigger to create a new record instead of update record so that different users' data will be saved in different records. Let us see how. Click the pencil icon to edit the event. In the event drop-down list, we choose the create record to save different users' data in different records. We choose the same table ID and insert corresponding data for name, email, and phone. Click the continue button and then the test step button and we see the data shown here. On our table, we can see another data have been added. This time, do not forget to click the Publish button. We enter the version name v1 and click the Publish button. 
With all the settings are done, we now are ready to collect the lead data from our chatbot. We simply run another test and enter the name, email address, and phone number. On the Zapier table, we can see another new record with the new username, email, and phone data. This works great. Now that we have a simple automated lead generation chatbot, we are going to publish it. Click the embed widget button and select this part of code and make a copy. Let's go to Google web page and right click the mouse to select inspect. Click the console tab and paste the code here and press the enter key on the computer. Now we can see a chat bubble on the bottom right corner. Click to start a conversation. We input the name, email, and phone number. The bot says, thank you, Kate. Let's go to our Zapier table and we can see the new data have been added. This works fantastic. But you may have found that we need to ask the user for name, email, and phone, and the user has to input the information after each question. If we have many more information to collect, such as, in a real estate bot, the address, the housing price range, the house size, the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, etc., we will need to ask many questions, and the user will easily get tired to answer these questions. In order to enhance the user experience, we show a better way to put the items in a form for the user to fill out. We will use a custom action block to connect to a form extension, which lets the user to submit the form. We enter ext underscore form here, and the default path name is response submitted. Do not forget to turn on the stop on action, so that the bot will wait until the form is submitted. We use a set block to set the variables using the last event payload to extract the username, email address, and phone number. We connect the set block with the API block and the yes button with the custom action block. Now, the logic goes from the custom block and set block to the API block and the last text block. Lastly, we publish the chatbot. We start a new conversation. We can see a form for the user to fill out. Let us fill out the form with the name, email, and phone, and submit it. The bot says, thank you, Andrew. This gives much better user experience, and the user does not need to answer many tedious questions one by one. On the Zapier table, we can see that the new data have been successfully added. If you are interested in learning how to add the form extension, please leave a comment below with a plus sign, so that I will see how many people are interested. If there are enough people, I will consider making a video to show how to do it. In summary, we have shown you how to connect a VoiceFlow chatbot with a Zapier table to automate lead generation. Hope you feel this video helpful. If you like this video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. If you have any comments and suggestions, please let us know. Thank you for your support.